probably. But the America's Promise Group boil this down to five assets that we can really get our arms around. Do children have a healthy start? That's what you guys are into. Do they have caring adults? You're into that too. Do they have safe places? I hope you're into that. Are they getting an effective education starting at birth? And do they have opportunities to help others? My friends who boil down the 40 Search Institute assets said the most important four were to instill in children a sense of generosity, independence, mastery, and belonging. So all of this fits together, and I think we can share a common agenda. The barriers, of course, are human sexuality, children do not choose their parents, and I think it's our collective job to help our adolescents decide when they're prepared to be parents. The support that we give families, involvement with schools, and certainly preschool, Smart Start, Head Start, uh, the forces in the community, the forces in the media. We fight this all the time. Why does the media want to help parents get vaccine information from Jenny McCarthy? who has absolutely no medical credentials, and then we spend all our time fighting uphill to say there's no medical evidence that what she says is true. So we share with you frustrations that children are spending an inordinate amount of time in front of television and video games, et cetera, when we should be reading to our children and encouraging our parents to read to our children. And then religion can be a double-edged sword, most vividly demonstrated by the Taliban in uh, the Far East. The value of an academy chapter to me, just to bring you to where Olson and I have grown up in the American Academy of Pediatrics, is to provide a forum where we share our experiences and our feelings with colleagues, we educate each other in the formal sense. We advocate together. It is far more effective for Smart Start and the American Academy of Pediatrics to advocate together than for us to go our separate ways. And we hone our leadership skills. Again, one of the leadership experiences Olson and I shared was during the S-CHIP debates of 1998 when Governor Hunt, your founder, call together a special session of the General Assembly. The Republicans in the House would have nothing to do with Governor Hunt and Secretary Bruton's Medicaid expansion. And Olson and I found ourselves in the hotel in Atlanta one weekend. And I said, Olson, you know some of those Republicans. Who wrote that bill for them that they think is better than the governor's bill? And sure enough, Olson knew. I said, call him up, find out find out what's going on. He called his friend who led us to the legislator who wrote the bill, and I called her from the lobby of the hotel in Atlanta, and uh, I told her we were concerned about their bill because it wasn't very helpful for special needs kids. And I, there was a little silence because I didn't know this person. It was a cold call, and she said, I'm so glad you called. And I think that's an example of how we don't realize how much experience we bring to the table. But in three days, Olson and I were having dinner with these Republican legislators, and they were inviting us to write our special needs package into the S-CHIP bill that eventually passed, and that's what you have in North Carolina, where there's a commission that reviews every child who's denied services with an S-CHIP so that if that child didn't get a service that Medicaid would have provided, there is a slush fund to provide that for that child. So within the rules of the politics, we created a program that was probably better than what the governor had put on the table in the first place. But none of that would have, hap would have happened if Olson and I hadn't just decided, well, by golly, somebody's got to do something. So every day, we have to do what we have to do. And then there's this issue of legacy. Uh, the North Carolina Pediatric Society has a rich tradition. Two of my children are pediatricians. I want them to know about that tradition because I think it's important to know where we've been so we can chart the course
for where we're going, and I would give credit to this little field uh, mnemonic to Peter Morris, a past president and director of Children's Services at the Wake County Health Department, who we hope Peter is recovering quickly from recent abdominal surgery. The open forum concept of the North Carolina Pediatric Society could play out in any of your states and in any of your organizations, and indeed it plays out just in my little community of Goldsboro. We think the person who founded this concept is dead because we have not been able to get anyone to come forward and take ownership. <laughs> but sometime around the start of Medicaid, we decided, somebody did, a pediatrician, that we should convene meetings in three different parts of the state three times a year, and we should identify a pediatrician from every sizable community and bring in the chair of pediatrics from our five teaching programs, Charlotte and our four med schools, and invite the Secretary of Health and Human Services, the Director of Medicaid, the Immunization Branch, the WIC office, Smart Start, public education, child advocacy groups, and we would pay for lunch and meet on a Saturday or Sunday, and we've been doing that uh, for over 30 years. And the beauty of that is the state employees who would do a lot of the talking to us at these meetings cannot lobby. But Olson and I can lobby. And it was a wonderful, it has been, and still is a wonderful partnership, and I would offer that to you. In my little community, we have the Wayne pediatric CME series that meets every Tuesday morning at the hospital cafeteria every Tuesday morning at 7 a.m. And we get some educational credit, but we can discuss any topic we want to. So we invite the health director or smart start Don Magoon from Wayne County, our partnership for children director, came and presented recently. Uh, mental health, obesity, family why. It's just wonderful to have a forum in which we can share our problems and come up with mutual solutions. So I commend that model to all of you. Just during uh, my career, we've seen Mike Lawless, a pediatrician from Winston-Salem, lead the effort to put children in car seats. I and my dad, since he got sued and I had to uh, pick up the pieces after that ridiculous situation in 1985, began to hack away at the immunization program to where with the help of very progressive state leadership in North Carolina, we have a marvelous immunization program. Our Medicaid program is a model, thanks to such visionaries as Jim Bernstein and Barbara Matula. Olson and I and others just made sure the HMOs couldn't mess it all up in the legislature, but if you look at what we have, it, re it really is uh, a model program. I talked to you about SCHIP. The Action for Children in North Carolina led the surge, and Olson helped with that because he's on, on, been on their leadership group forever, to expand health insurance so all children can have access to affordable health insurance if we ever crawl out of this economic downturn. The infrastructure's there, in other words. Child development and mental health. The pediatrician named Jane Foy from Wake Forest has done an awesome job making sure Medicaid and SCHIP children have access to good community-based mental health services. And then the effort to curb obesity has been led by Bob Schwartz, a pediatrician from Winston-Salem. None of this could have happened without this team effort that we have within the open forum concept where state government and other advocacy groups work hand-in-hand -hand with pediatricians. <clears throat> 